Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, Melvin's, uh, their biggest album was Houdini, uh, mostly because Kurt Cobain was involved in it. Oh, hey, Nim. Uh, and, um, yeah, basically, they followed up their uh, most famous album with uh, an album everybody hated, <laughs> as they do. Um, let's see. Uh, now, the country under w <laughs> Mr. William Clinton knows I never seize my nose at the idea of dicking around, but this nonsense just wears really darn thin after about ten minutes. Uh <laughs> This record is full of crowd noise, silence, pointless samples, and no true melodies. Um, I, 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 that may be an overstatement, but um, also I think one of their biggest uh, achievements was they did have a song in Tony Hawk Underground 2, um, which that I definitely cannot play <laughs> because of copyright reasons, but uh, uh, let's see. So, and I forgot to pull up the chat. But yeah, this is a weird one. Uh, my personal history with this is that the first time I heard it, uh, I was alone in a hotel room at like 3 a.m. And I feel like that's the right, <laughs> right, uh, fucking mindset for this. So, um, I'm trying to think, should I explain what the songs are after we hear them or before we hear them? <laughs> okay, yeah, because... Uh, <laughs> There's a lot to talk about here. Um, the bassist Mark Dutram uh, recently, I think a couple weeks ago, uh, posted a breakdown of this record, all the details he can remember, because he has not heard this album in about 20 years. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll be, I'll be surfing this album. Uh, it took Audio Surf a second game before they added a proper surfing mode in it. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, you're a kid that uh, just heard the Melvins through uh, because Kurt Cobain loves them a lot, and you buy their follow-up album, and the first track that you get is this. Also, this is the uh, back album cover. You can uh, there's a skin to where they uh, you can put your album art into the level. Oh, that's, that's actually pretty quiet. Give me a second. Uh. Whoa, whoa! The screen sh 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 shrank a lot all of a sudden. <laughs> it just went to like the smallest possible one. Okay, okay. I think we good now. Uh, the song is called "How About." Don't know why it's called that. Okay, here we go. First track introduced in the album, uh, this isn't quite a song, uh, <laughs> wait, hold on, there's no music coming from the, oh, fuck, I forgot to, uh, <laughs> damn it, no, 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 uh, I'm playing the album because it's not, uh, it's not detected by anything, I accidentally turned desktop audio off that entire time, uh, so, it's a good thing somebody caught that before we went on too long. <laughs> nice. Grunk Zone. Every, there's always something going on. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you for catching that. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. Uh, the basis is the shadowy man in the cowboy hat. Uh, he still wears that cowboy hat to this day. He even has a video called The Power of the Hat. I've not watched it yet, but I'm sure it's very informative. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we have two of the two audio files of the same preacher and some kind of live performance going on and and birds chirping. Uh, that text says where law riders go masked. Again, I have no idea what that means. Um, 
<laughs> Please take turns talking. <laughs> Uh, the object of this mode, by the way, is uh, at the peaks you do like a sick jump trick, and that gives you points. But with a track like this, I'm not really sure when to do that. Like that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if this VOD gets dinged, um, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, if the VOD gets dinged, you have the local. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Also, uh, I have it just recorded right here, so... Well, well, this will not be lost media. Really getting into it. Uh... <laughs> You can tell he's from New Orleans just by the way he says, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> My favorite part's happening right about now, though. They're interviewing a doorman for Elvis. <laughs> well, he goes on and goes up in the elevator being drunk. But I mean, what does he do? He comes through this door. Why don't you just tell me? He comes through this door. Comes through this door here. What is this, the kitchen? No, they should be afraid of <laughs> Sick jump you off of uh, the guy explaining that's the trailer. <laughs> you have a lot of celebrities. Well, uh, all the conventions and things in the past just come to this. What do you think about uh, Elvis Presley coming to you? Well, it's wonderful. You know anything about him? Yeah. Do I know anything? Peak about cinema, it? yeah. I'm nowhere near high yeah. enough for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Butler probably is, but also he's probably uh, he's probably coming down from the combination high drunk that he had. Show us where he's coming in. Uh, Give me time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say. There's two doors in this The last track on this album is called "Roll Another One." So <laughs> nice. <laughs> He turned 51 and you went to Area 51. I played Area 51, the game. The original one, not that PS2 game nobody remembers. There's a bunch of blocks up here. Oh, the birds chirping, of course, yeah. The most intense part of that song. So that intro is, uh, well, as you can probably guess, a sound collage of a whole bunch of shit. Um, so the bassist, when he was hanging around in New Orleans, uh, he, I guess, uh, ran, ran into that street preacher twice and uh, recorded him twice and decided to throw both audio tracks onto the same track. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, the Elvis Doorman thing, uh, comes from a biopic of Elvis called, I think, like, Elvis on Tour or something. And it was, um, I, I found it through Internet Archive, strangely enough. Uh, I think you could buy it at the usual places, but somebody just threw it up on Internet Archive. And yeah, I guess Elvis was big enough to where they were interviewing, or almost grilling the Doorman, going by the tone of that sometimes, uh... They were just like, what does Elvis do when he goes through this door? Like, I guess they were expecting really juicy, uh, details from the guy who holds the door for him sometimes. <laughs> like, like, what's Elvis really like when he goes through that door? <laughs> like, what does he do? What door does he go through? And he's just like, well, he goes through this door here. He, uh, he goes up to his room. Uh, sometimes, uh, I talk to him. Uh, it depends whether or not I'm going to talk to him. Yeah, tell us about your two seconds of interaction with Elvis, yeah. And apparently that whole scene became a huge in-joke with the band. Um, but now we're on to my second and favorite track. Uh, unfortunately, it only lasts like about a minute. Uh, but, 
Um, this one's a fucking bop. Uh, I'll just put it that way. It does not sound like a bop at first, but it is. Right, I have to change the skin at some point. Okay, this one's pretty hard, actually. <laughs> air on that. It's already over. I wish that would go on for like three hours, to be honest. Um, so, not much story to that song. Um, <laughs> I really have spent half of my life knowing you, haven't I? Good half. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, most Melvin's Banger is less than two, uh, less, less than two minutes. Um, I uploaded that song to several discords because it was so short. <laughs> um... Not much story to that song. It's just, um, just a quick little tune, um, and not really a riff to it, as you can hear. It's just kind of the guitar is just kind of going like, um, but I love it. I get that song stuck in my head a lot, even though it's not much of a song. <laughs> but, um, yeah, droner. It, it's got it's got a drone to it, um. But now we have the interestingly uh, titled Pick It and Flick It. <laughs> uh, this, uh... Oh, I forgot to change the skin again. Hold on. Uh, I gotta keep this visually diverse. As much as I... Uh... <laughs> like these uh... these three men just stretched over the sky, we do have to uh... change it a little bit here. Um, I have plenty of custom skins. Uh, one of them, you can be Homer Simpson. Uh, I'm sure he loves this album. Three Men Stretched Over the Sky is my new band name. Yeah, when we when we finally get our uh, prog rock uh, project off the ground, uh, that'll definitely... Uh... So Pick It and Flick It's another quick one. Look at the air on that. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hello, Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? Oh my God. <laughs> he definitely was not picking it and flicking it during that solo, I'll tell you that much. It's just still going. Come on, we're almost there. I think this skin's making the game a little laggy. Okay, I'll uh, switch then. We love you, Baltimore! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, um... 
So you were on the nose with that uh, Hello Cleveland bit because that's exactly what that was a parody of. <laughs> nice. Yeah. They were just like, why don't we just make a whole song that's just the ending to a, a typical arena rock song? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was the bassist doing that solo. Um, his comment. Man, when your bassist is that good at guitar, you <laughs> pretty well handled. He. I, I I often wonder why he's now the former bassist after that, uh, but um, oh wait no that's not the one we want. Um, what's the what's the basis on and where can I get some? Yes, yeah, <laughs> he had a lot of hand in in this album. Uh, he's on a sweet Alabama liquid grass snake. <laughs> um. Oh hey Roman. Um. And, yeah, um, I don't know where the name came from. Uh, Mark Dutram said he was imitating a specific guitarist, but I long forgot what the name of that was. Um, but his video is still up, so you can watch that. Uh, oh, shit! Hey, K! <laughs> oh, I am so sorry that this is the, uh, <laughs> the song that you joined in on. <laughs> so this is a little um, track called Montreal. Um, what the, what is, that's not right, hold on, <laughs> why, why was, why was the rapture happening during that, <laughs> uh, okay, maybe, uh, we'll just, um, <laughs> let's just stick with the album art, uh, <laughs> How hot dog gotta can you use some of that Southwest Louisiana Oingo Boingo Bubba Koosh? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people have been on that. This is this no Melver. <laughs> okay, we'll have to go with the three stretched men because that does not lag the game. So Montreal isn't really a song. Which is funny, because the track is pretty diverse on that graph there, but, um... Kick flip into flashbang? <laughs> what on earth? Yeah. <laughs> so since not much happens on this track, um, I might as well say this is this is crowd noise. Uh, that's all it is, basically. Um, it was a scrapped concept of them just recording crowd noises from concerts that they were on. And, uh, named after the states they were in. They should record the flag crowd if they flashbang them like this, yeah. <laughs> um, at one point, they do start saying, chanting the name of another band that they're opening for. Um, we flashbanged our fans. Okay, dr uh, Dale doing the little drum roll gave me a little bit of a jump there. Uh, this portion of the album I call the uh, bathroom break portion of the album, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Every time that drum comes in. Uh, there's another drum. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, I'm doing very badly on this track somehow. Thump! Yeah, just occasionally. <laughs> Dale will imbue you with his, uh, massive drum noise. <laughs> the audience screeching gave me a little bit of a jump there. So I think it's at this part.
baby. Did anybody catch what they were chanting there? <laughs> I didn't get it. Primus, yeah. They were, uh, they, mm. they were opening for Primus and they were busy doing this, so the audience was just going, Primus, Primus! <laughs> uh, Melvins were known for kind of just going on and on with nothing for a while just to fuck with people. Uh, <laughs> I heard of a story where uh, their song Zodiac, the opening riff, they just played it for like five minutes straight without actually starting the song. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel right. like if you're at a Primus show, you have to expect this kind of shenanigans. Yeah, like Les Claypool is a big, I, I imagine he's a big fan of this shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was like, what, like two Residence covers on Frizz Frizzle Fry? <laughs> like... Uh, but yeah, I told you the whole story of the song right there. Um, or song. <laughs> um, next up, uh, is a song that, uh, Mark wanted to make very clear that Buzza was the one that named this one. Um, it's Chief Ten Beers. He says he doesn't know why Buzz named it that. He never asked him why. <laughs> uh, but it's named that, and I guess we have to accept that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this one is also kind of a bathroom break song, um, but it is kind of a song. Uh, the drummer is doing a guitar solo throughout this entire thing. There's a random sample of an orchestral track on the left side here. Uh, the sound of somebody banging on a bucket or something and chance from I don't know where but probably something the bassist found I also love that the orchestral sample does not sync up with the track at all uh, <laughs> it's kind of a mess <laughs> Oh god, it's so bright. This album's very hard to play, apparently. Like, live? Oh, uh, <laughs> probably that too. Uh, but, I mean, like, in audio surf. Uh, a, uh. Lot, a lot of these tracks are much more intense than I thought they'd be. <laughs> Yeah, like, a lot of people are like, Locust, Divorce, and Technician is the greatest album ever, but Frick is bad. And I'm like, I don't get that. <laughs> like, they're almost the same album. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> nothing here is, uh, out of the ordinary if we listen to the Butthole Surfers. Although I suppose a lot of, a lot of people get thrown off by their shit pre, uh, uh, Independent Worm Saloon. That's true, yeah, that's when they started getting normal as <laughs> Logos of Borson Technician, I like how uh, they put the same song on there twice. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I love the Omen also because they just saw an opening band, I think they were just called Omen, I believe. Um, and. Um, they were just like, God, they sounded so stupid. We should cover this band that we barely remember hearing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I do not know where this orchestral sample is even from. Could be anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to sit here and say that, like, I don't like Independent Worm Saloon or Electric Larry Land better. Than Locust Abortion Technician, but <laughs> it was definitely them going down the garden path to 
like commercial success to the point where they released that I can't even remember the name of the album, but it had that single The Shape of Life on it. That song. Yeah. Yeah, Weird Revolution or whatever. Yeah. They had the song co-written by Kate Rock, which they themselves admitted was a terrible song. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gibby Haynes, the only guy to not call him Kid Rock, he just calls him by his real name, Bob. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that Bob, I don't really like the tone of his music, uh, that, that old Bob. Uh, yeah, I'd just call him that or an asshole at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is before Kid Rock was really going, going at it, let's say. <laughs> or maybe he was, I don't know. I, I was not a historian on him back in the day. <laughs> I think at that point people were just a lot more forgiving of shitty right-wing politics. That's true, yeah. And you also gotta remember the butthole surfers are from Texas. That is I true, say. yeah. And I'm not saying they're right-wing or anything, but you kind of have to get used to if you grow up in a place like that. That's true, Kind yeah. of putting that shit to the side in your day-to-day -day interactions or else you're just gonna be a hermit. Yeah. That's the funny thing, like... The humor of the man, it's more gross than it is bigoted. Like, I don't think there's any... Like, I don't remember any actual bigotry in any of their stuff. No, not, not even, like, the... The stuff that, like... You get just from cultural radiation at the time. Yeah, because I remember there was that one song off of a Psychic Powerless that has kind of an awkward title, but I think the lyrics are kind of making fun of racism, so... <laughs> Okay, uh... <laughs> Song's almost over, but... <laughs> like I said, this is the bathroom break portion of this album. Uh, <laughs> there's not a whole, lot, <laughs> a whole lot going on in this track, but it is like five minutes. Uh, people like this song just because of the title, and I'm like, that is not enough to... <laughs> There's an Alice Donuts, uh, Donut song I like, uh, mostly because of the title. It's a pretty good song, but uh, I have to pull it up because it is so fucking long. Uh, Alice Donut, by the way, would be a great band if it wasn't for the vocalist. <laughs> Not that he like sucks as a person or anything, he just sucks at singing. <laughs> Which band? I missed it. Uh, Alice Donut. Oh, I never... I have not listened. Yeah, they're not big. Uh, <laughs> on purpose, basically. You know what? I'm, I'm growing increasingly fine with that as time goes on. Yeah. I hate popularity. That's why I did the least viewed event yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with, uh, like, popularity if it's incidental. Yeah. But as soon as you start, like, compromising what you try to do to chase it, you're kind of fucked. Yeah, I mean, look what happened to the bubble surfers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want people to meet you where you are, not the opposite. Yeah. Okay, we're finally at the end of that. Uh, I forget what song is even next. Oh, wait, no, I think I remember. It's actually one of my favorite little things on here. Uh... Let's see. Let's see, if you listen to Primus, you should be ready to see Les Claypool play a 30-minute canned bean solo before anything else happens. That is very true. Uh, also, hey, Aaron. Uh, you made it just... Hi. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I, I was... Sorry. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> so I thought... start Budokai 2, I think. Budokai 3. One of those two. <laughs> oh. I thought you said why at first, which is a lot of reviews for this album. Uh, <laughs> but the, the menu track for I think it's Budokai 3 th starts with like a whispered hi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there is a track that begins with a whisper on this album, actually, and it's one of the most infamous. Uh, but this one is simply called Underground, and you'll probably get the gist of it within like two seconds. Um, not really a song, again. I'll say, hey, Kay. Uh, but I find it very interesting. He's playing a song, but he's 
not part of the band. Um, <laughs> so basically, the it's like a recording of a subway station where like someone has a guitar about twenty feet ahead of you. Yeah, someone's busking. Yeah, there's a couple buskers on this track uh, playing their hearts out here. Um, I, I heard a dude playing a blues version of America Fuck Yeah when I was in New York City, <laughs> which was pretty great. That is one way to improve that song, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the bassist lived in London for a time, and this was from the London Underground, I believe. Um, he forgets what station, but uh, he commented, It's a shame that Prick did not come as a scratch and sniff record, because uh, <laughs> the scent of the London subways are a unique one. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> now there's a part in here that you remember that Aqua Teen episode where Carl was like possessed by that flute. <laughs> I just see him hopping here. <laughs> flute guy's giving me some sweet air, by the way. Uh, <laughs> This is, I love this kind of stuff, honestly. Just like, just kind of time capsules of the environment. And, uh... You just kind of wonder where these people are nowadays. <laughs> Wet coffin coming, by the way. That did not sound very nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sweet air time on that. It's like, I like how this is like, this is the track where they're like, okay, we have to have peaks happen at some point. Uh, flute guy. Yeah, that's... <laughs> and that's that. Uh, a lot of uh, talented musicians in the London subway, I guess. Or any subway, really. I mean... The definition of a song in a Melvin's album, Ghost Places, yes. <laughs> uh, is this in the right order, actually? Yeah, this is in the right order. Okay. Uh, this is a short little tune called uh, Chalk People. Um, I think the title is a reference to Chalk Road, where they recorded most of this stuff. And uh, <laughs> the song is interesting. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I don't know who that is on the mic making those noises. It could be any three of them. <laughs> oh god, this track is really intense to play. <laughs> in the game, probably also in the studio. Uh <laughs> the chat box right now is incredible. <laughs> That's also another thing I forgot to mention about the Melvins. Do not expect actual lyrics from this band. It is mostly gibberish. And that was Chalk People, uh, one of the highlights of this album, according to most reviewers. Hey, that's the second time the Headless Kamikaze came up in conversation at this event. That could have been Shadow Stevens doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Punch the Lion. This is a, another song similar to Chief Ten Beers, but I, I feel like it works better. Um... It's kind of another collage song, but it is tuneful. Uh, <laughs> and I know I said I'd leave the summaries afterwards, but I feel like these, some of these require immediate uh, information. So this is Dale playing a drum beat. Uh, in one channel, you have uh, bell noises that he ripped off from the CD. And the other side... Uh, 
I believe he said that was recordings of a uh, tribal dance from uh, Western Africa or something. And it's it's an interesting combination. <laughs> Taco Bells. Yeah, that's there's so many tacos. There's that Meek Mill track, that's for sure. <laughs> Meek Mill, uh, unbeknownst to me, showed up in my wrestling empire scene. Uh, <laughs> we encountered a lot of rappers I did not expect. Uh, I believe Chief Keith got hit by a train at one point. Uh, <laughs> oh, damn. There was a lot of rappers just, like, walking into the train for some reason. I don't know what... There's somebody, uh, wailing on the kazoo there. Uh... I don't know if that comes from the uh, tribe doing the chant there. I feel like this co this song is probably like the happiest sounding out of the uh, the whole album. Uh, it's like if you released or was their album just like nah whatever, <laughs> or their album their al uh, uh, label. They were on Atlantic, but they released this through Amphetamine Reptile Records while they were still on the label. Uh, so... I assume Atlantic was like, we're good. Yeah, it did that pretty much. Uh, it what, sounds like if you compressed every holiday. Yeah, exactly. Just all together at once. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not much of a song, but I, I like... I can't not be happy hearing this for some reason. It's just... Especially when they start stomping on the, uh, chant sample. <laughs> make a holiday- make all the holidays fight to the death. Yeah, then they- Basically, yeah. <laughs> God, we're more than halfway through this album. I forgot how short this album actually is. <laughs> We're almost at the end uh, of this track. So sweet. This, this also is kind of an intense track to play. Uh, the only one that wasn't was like the uh, fucking sound collage with the Elvis Door guy on it. It's already deathmatch, but it's holidays personified, and this plays non-stop. <laughs> ho ho ho, I will punch your lion. Uh, what's next? Yeah, so this is, this is the song that starts with the whispering. Another short one. What is this? Uh, this is a Melvin's album played through Audio Surf. Hey. And now, for your listening pleasure, <coughs> a few moments of pure digital silence. Wait, I didn't know the Resident Evil 4 salesman did music. <laughs> that was the basis, so uh, if I ever encounter the basis, then he offers me stuff through his coat. Uh... Yeah, I'm taking that. <laughs> there, there's still <laughs> blocks on this somehow. <laughs> And yeah, that's pure digital silence. <laughs> uh, this was a deliberate tribute to John Cage, the bassist. Um, uh, attended several uh, performances of his hit piece. Uh, and this was uh, his heartfelt little tribute to him where he pretended to be a British guy at the beginning. <laughs> How is... <laughs> Usually audio search just doesn't do anything at this part, but it's giving me stuff to do. <laughs> but there's nothing for me to do. <laughs> it's like there's a hot there's a hot track in here. You just we're we're not we're not, we're not privy. We, we uh <laughs> we're not tuned well, to the frequency. Really, there, there are minute fluctuations on this waveform that our software can see, so you're gonna get them. <laughs> yeah. The song has high frequently uh, frequency notes recorded. God, yeah. What if this song drives dogs crazy? I'm gonna say so, <laughs> somewhere there's a dog freaking the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have pure digital silence again, bro. <laughs> 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 
dogs be like, damn, this is fire. <laughs> well, you know, the jingle of a dog's collar would be good right here. That's true. Wait, there's a song missing from here. What the fuck? What? Hmm. What? The most hidden tracks. <laughs> it's just a normal instrumental song. It was the one that was hurt, uh, played in uh, the No Melvber trailer. It was called Larry. Huh. Um, well, damn, I guess we can't play that. I don't have it for some reason. <laughs> Sorry, Larry, uh, wherever <laughs> you are. Just realize it's called Prick. Yeah, there's there's a pretty dark reason why it's called that, actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, this was in 94, um, they were touring with Nirvana at the time, um, and Nirvana canceled. That's how this album even got recorded. They just had time to fuck around, basically. Um, they didn't know what was going on at the time, but the whole Kurt Cobain thing happened near the end of this recording, I think. Oh. And they were originally going to call this album Kurt Cobain. <laughs> But, um, after that, they were like, we didn't want this to be a tribute album. And you can tell the type of, like, close friends they were when, upon them having to change the name, they are like, man, what a prick. <laughs> and now it's called Prick <laughs> because of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> the basic clarified, it was, you know, just, it's one of those things where, you know, you have to, uh, how do they put it, um... Grief through laughter, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but can you really say I got that dog in me if you don't like listening to pure digital silence? <laughs> <laughs> so roll another one is the 14 minute epic that is just like a bunch of shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the origin of Spookenhausen lies. Because his name came from this track. Uh, so this album, I mean, I. Th no, this song was named after uh, Dale Crover was obsessed with Neil Young to the point where he later would show up in a Neil Young video as Neil Young. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, that's a that's a picture of him right to the right. You can see the resemblance pretty <laughs> pretty good. Uh, but he named this after Neil Young's uh, many pot smoking anthems, basically. And there's another factoid, uh, more pr more. Uh, personal to me than anything. Best Buy used to have like these, I don't know if it was like a jukebox or something, but it was basically like, hey, check out how good this sound system is. You can pull up any song. And I pulled up this song. So I pulled it up, walked away, and a bunch of customers heard this in the Best Buy. <laughs> so that ball of, uh, like stereo <laughs> audio equipment you're talking about some of those had bluetooth <laughs> and i worked at geek squad so <laughs> yeah we definitely fucked around with <laughs> this album owns yeah see what i mean like <laughs> this is a big shit post album that nobody was ready for <laughs> so that's segment one that was dale crover going for a little bit uh this is an album. do this is an outtake of Pick It and Flick It, I believe. Pick It and Flick It being the Stadium Rock parody. Get some sweet air off of that. <laughs> I should really get a bold prep for me, <laughs> prep for this shit, I? We're near the end, but you might as well, I mean. <laughs> I mean, it's called Roll Another One, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh god. This one's also pretty intense. Uh, no time to it now. <laughs> The little noise at the end of this segment is slightly unsettling to me for some reason. Let's 
Yeah, the, I think that's just the base amp shutting off, but something slightly spooky about it. <laughs> oh, shit. This feels like the Akira soundtrack. It does. <laughs> And now it's over. So you may remember that um, th that became a full song in the next album, Stoner Witch, under the name Road Bull. Uh, the same drum beat is used in the middle of that. This segment is apparently called Thumbs after a roadie they really liked. And what was his real name? Well, it was... Jack! <laughs> and I'm getting some sweet air off of them saying his name. Thomas. Jeff. <laughs> I think they have a few more uh, <laughs> repetitions of this before it ends. <laughs> Jeff Thomas, yeah, Thomas. that's his name. <laughs> and that's the end of Thumbs. Okay, so... <laughs> now the next one is, uh... I'm glad this is just a shit post album. Yeah. <laughs> these two segments, uh, the bassist does not remember anything about these. But I'll always associate this song with, uh... I was getting driven home from that hotel I listened to this first. I remember waking up in front of a Wawa to this part playing. So, this part is just the Wawa song to me now. I wish I knew someone named Jeff Thomas so I could just send him that part. <laughs> Honestly, if you know any Jeffs or Thomases, that should be enough. <laughs> Basis is going way too hard for this little improv bit. <laughs> okay. It's just a bunch of bunch of clatter. Oh god, I can't see. <laughs> <coughs> There must be two friends called Jeff and Thomas who've done that already somewhere in the world, right? I hope so. <laughs> I, I cannot see a fucking thing. Everything is going too fast. I think this is the soundtrack to uh, skating uh, skating downhill on uh, in snow and not knowing where you are. <laughs> Okay, and now we have where the name Spookenhausen came from. They did a little noise track and they were like, Hey, our German engineer just yelled German over it. And he went, okay. Okay, Lord, I'm Somebody's doing Adam Sandler style baby talk in the <laughs> other channel here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the bassist said he loves this song. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't blame him. <laughs> this is what Spookin' Housen hears in his head 24 7. Yeah. <laughs> I love how angry the guitar is in this part, though. <laughs> the game can't handle it. <laughs> yeah. 
how this track did not make it on the top 40 charts in 94 is beyond me. The ad libs here really sell it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should have translated what he actually said, uh, but... <laughs> what time portal did I travel through where people are playing audio so uh, I, I, I've been in one of those games. Playing only the best music for it. <laughs> Here we go. There it is. <laughs> but the way this part ends is also. <laughs> That's how that ends. Uh, the bassist commented he he was surprised at how fucking creepy the ending to that was. <laughs> and here we get another crowd noise ending to top the whole album off. I don't know where this was performed. Um, but Dale goes a lot in this. And that's when I do my jumps. <laughs> That's uh, pretty much it. Uh... So this is essentially the end of the whole album. Um... <laughs> and, uh, as Aaron predictably, uh, uh, predictably, uh, correctly predicted, this album, I, I feel like, is the true definition of punk. Uh... <laughs> it's like, you know... <laughs> I, I can always appreciate a flagrant disregard for <laughs> structure. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, some about the, well, I mean, minus this part. This part's kind of boring, to be honest. But uh, this would not be as tolerable if we weren't able to give us the lore behind the chaos. I think that's an important part of it, also. Uh, there's a lot here, to say the least. A lot of people called this album lazy and, you know, nothing worthwhile listening to. I don't believe that very much. Uh, there's a lot of fun to have here, except for maybe, you know, Chief 10 Beers is kind of the bathroom break track, but, uh, you know, that in Montreal, but at least you get to hear uh, the audience going, Primus, Primus! <laughs> in your hands. <laughs> There's like how someone behind like a you know a door or like in the next building is having a just a blast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Either that or somebody's trying to sleep on the hotel above. <laughs> yeah, they named this. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the bassist said uh, the guitarist named that. He never asked him why. He just did. Uh, <laughs> so he could not explain why he did that. But people were just weren't ready for this. I think. Yeah, I checked the rate rate your music page, and people are coming around to this finally. It only took them about like what, like twenty years. Uh, I think Buzzo said this uh, album is a crap no nonsense record, but he's never right about anything, so. <laughs> God, I'm so upset that we couldn't play Larry though. That was. <laughs> it could always, uh, well, I guess we can't YouTube it. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I don't think Audio Surf has the YouTube link thing. Okay, uh, too long didn't read version of Spookenhausen. It's about a guy talking 
about getting into a car and being in it with the Melvins and hating it. And then something about buying a house and that he wants to shoot his neighbor's pig because it stinks. Also, he's not Spookenhausen, he's Walter von Kratzenberg. Um, I do not appreciate Spookenhausen's hatred for pigs, but... <laughs> what do we mean by pig? Like a literal pig. Oh. Yeah. If he was living next to a cop, maybe I would support his views, but, uh... It was just a smelly little pig. And I'm like, you leave those little pigs alone. My wrestling knowledge is on the low tier side. <laughs> oh, he's just an OC that we made up based on the song, so... <laughs> well, based on the song and also the random button. Uh, but... <laughs> I'm reading a Vice review of this, where they describe it as, um, how much can we fuck with you and still keep you on board? <laughs> exactly, yeah. I should've, I should've pulled up the reviews for this. I only pulled up the Mark Prendel one. Um, yeah, people, people, again, people were just not ready for this, uh, I feel like in the current age of, like, how internet humor is, I feel like this album will do better now than back in 94. <laughs> like... Pioneers of shit posting. Before we go, I would like to play Ricketts again, though. That That's a bop. Um, unironic bop on this album. And then after that, we can, uh... We can set up for the Sonic Robo Blast Cart 2. I never remember the name of that thing. Because they shoved in 2 in the middle of the title and not at the end? So it's like Sonic Robo Blast 2 Cart? I, I had to go hunting for, uh, for it earlier, and that, that was fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that whole process of misremembering things. <laughs> I have to download the newest version. I forgot mine is, like, way outdated. <laughs> uh. I, I don't even know if, like, the one on, uh, the one on GitHub says one point, uh, you know what, let me check. <laughs> yeah. Let me not just feed you falsehoods in the middle of this. <laughs> in the middle of this, uh... I like how now you hear the hum of a guitar. Ooh, that's subtle, though. I like that. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's over. That's the end uh, of the this is one. This is 1.6, but that feels wrong. Yeah, hang on a sec. <laughs> hmm. um, yeah, let's play Ricketts one more time. Actually, since uh, people are here now... Um, <laughs> Aaron, did you want to listen to the first two tracks of this, or? I'm, I'm, I'm just vibing. <laughs> okay. We'll play records at least. Okay. Uh, because this was the song that I uploaded to a bunch of people's discords because it was so short. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a bop despite the guitar not really doing a riff the entire time. It's just doing this. <laughs> But I love it. <laughs> I kind of realize this is the same drum beat that Dale played in Punch the Lion also. <laughs> this gets stuck in my head all the fucking time. Ah, okay. So 1.6 is right. That, that's the. That's it. That's good. Fighter Zombie has some explaining to do. That's very true. Wait, who, who has some explaining to do? <laughs> Power Man 5000. Yeah. Guy. <laughs> oh, did he rip this song off? <laughs> have you ever heard Worlds Collide? I have not. Uh... So take this and weld it to a Rob Zombie song. <laughs> you could you could so easily rape that DJ the two. <laughs> I'll have to check it out after this. Uh, who is white and why is he zombie? <laughs> <laughs> and it's already over. That could have gone for like five hours and I wouldn't have complained. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, Melvins have had a strange relationship with White Zombie. Um, in that that is the worst tour they said that they were on. Uh, not because of Rob Zombie, it was because of his, like, his crew, basically. 
a lot of mm. like stuff having to go through manager going through other person going through security guard going through that and blah 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 um, but I do like the story where the bassist, uh, while they were setting up for the venue, Rob Zombie and, uh, was it Sherry Zombie? Uh, I think her name was. Um, the only guy I know that worked on House of the Dead and the Monsters. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, they were setting up, except for those two who were in bathing suits. <laughs> and they were like, the bassist is like, what the fuck is this? And he noticed there was just, like, this little patch in the grass that was, like, uh, they put, like, you know, do not enter stuff around, basically. And then he just witnessed the two sunbathing while everybody else set up for the concert. <laughs> and he's like, I gotta say, that kind of goes against the whole Rob Zombie, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, aesthetic a that's... little bit. <laughs> Just him, him with like cucumbers in his eyes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also, the Melvins on another album that I really like, Stag. Um, they have like this six minute, just like noisy as shit, scary sludge song um, called Goggles. And I wondered why it was called Goggles. And the bassist said, uh, well, you know how Rob Zombie wears goggles a lot? Yeah. Power, Power Man, yeah, Power Man Five Thousand also very guilty of not not getting out of the goggles accusations. <laughs> it's like, why do you why do you need? Are you going skiing later? What are you? <laughs> uh, well, with that, y yeah, like his go well, Rob Zombie's goggles have a scarier music background than him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that was uh, Prick Surf. Uh, <laughs> My crowning achievement of anything I've done, I think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, with that, we will be setting up Sonic Robo Kart, and uh, I will have to talk to Colexo in a second to get that set up. So, uh, intermission time. <laughs> 